Welcome back to the Burn Up Bobby YouTube channel. In today's video, I am working on my personal GY6 ruckus. The frame is back from sandblasting. I got a bunch of parts back from powder coat. I'm going to show you a few things I did. I modified some parts to make this build a little bit different and just to my likings. Because like I said, this is going to be my bike for the next 10, 8, 10 years, maybe even longer. So I really want this thing to be exactly how I want it. I'm sure I'll change stuff along the way because stuff always progresses, things get better, things change, so there's always going to be that and as you all know who have these bikes, stuff fail. Anyways, I modified some things. If there is something that you like here that I've done, I'm going to put the Amazon links below in the description. So right now, remember this. Click the links below. You can find the things that I use for my builds for the bikes, whether it's tools, the microfibers, the cleaning utensils, all that stuff I'm going to post below, you can check it out. Also, I want to say a big thank you, and I'll put his channel below, T. Torres, Tyler. Be sure to check out his content. He's got a new Navi, he's got the new 2022 Grom, so he's doing a lot of stuff with that. All of our uh, mini bike community guys, head over to his channel, check it out. He, does, he has car content as well, so if you're the car and the scooter scene, it's the best of both worlds. Why not? I'm going to show you guys now what I've gotten started with. So the frame is now back from sandblasting. I had Bert go back through and weld up all these holes. I didn't want to fill this with bond though because when you do something like that it's it's gonna crack. The bondo is gonna split so he just threw in some welds. I told him I didn't want anything pretty. Just fill this in. I'm gonna be grinding it down and then smoothing it out with bondo anyways. So that's that. The frame I believe they acid dipped it and then also sandblasted it so it's all good to go but when I say like these factory welds are are boogered in let me focus in on that there that's the factory welds there you don't see a lot of it because the powder coat fills in a lot of this but when you sandblast it and you see it these things are just snotted on so I'm gonna be cleaning all this up making it look nice that's the agenda for today it's gonna be a lot of work, so it's probably gonna be a lot of time lapsing. The next thing on the chopping block is I have the TRS push button block off. These come in like an anodized black or a raw, and then they have a black button with like a little raw cap. I took I bought the raw one from the rug shop and I powder coated it gloss black. And then what I did is I drilled out the two holes here and I got these Amazon, these buttons off Amazon. Which come in a pack. And I think there's like six per pack or whatever and they're little momentary push buttons. So they don't lock, they're just like the perfect start button. So I replaced the button that was in the TRS um, push button block off. I took the silver button out, I drilled it out a little bit bigger, I think like a quarter inch or half inch, and then I pushed, I put this black push button in, and as you can see it just makes it super clean. This one right here is going to be my start button, and then I think I'm going to make this one my horn. So I'll have start button and then horn right there. They have a little backing nut on the back side and they just tighten them up in there and those are now good to go. The reason why I'm putting the horn here is I'm trying to clean up the left control as much as possible. I want these handlebars to be super clean. So I'm trying to relocate the things as best as possible. The next thing you have to worry about is the high low beam and the blinkers. For the high low beam I'm having just the LED bar so I'm not going to need any uh, high low. I'm just going to have it on a regular button switch. For the blinkers last night I was up till like 1 o'clock and I have these some of you might know what this housing's for from. This is the 
plastic housing. It usually comes with two clips. There's a little metal clip here and there. I'm having those powder coated black. This is for the NCY push button. They call it their kill switch or their start button switch. It comes with their front end kits. I've had a couple of these that have just accrued over the years. So with that, I bought a push button that will go inside of there. And then this is going to sit on the handlebar just like so. I have two of these. So there's going to be the left and the right. And these are going to be for my blinkers. So when I push in for the right blinker, I'm just going to reach over my thumb, push in. You can see the button's locked in. When I'm done with the blinker, just push back out. So I would have two of these next to each other like this. As you can see, they're super small. I'm actually going to still work on these because it's still a prototype right now. I'm going through stuff. But I'm going to shave the plastic housing down and bring these closer together and then use like a, it's almost like a plastic weld almost like a JB weld for, for plastic. I'm gonna mold that and then have it painted. So these two will be super close together. It's gonna to be my left and right blinker. My goal is to have the buttons almost touching they're that close so I could just reach over and go, you know, left, right, and just do that. So that's all that's gonna be on the handlebar itself. Today's video, as you can see in the title, I'm going to be starting now grinding and sanding all of this down. It's hot out. It's not going to be fun, so I'm going to go ahead and get right to it. you guys where I'm at so I've been trying a few different techniques to see what's gonna work best for me I have a ton of the uh, I have a Dremel with all different type of sanding bits um, some of the grinding bits the cleaning and then some polishing stuff here and then of course I have the old the old trusty there so what I'm trying to do is see which works best for taking these welds down I don't know if you remember in the last shot before the time lapse, this was uh, all boogered up and everything. So I've taken it down. It's almost smooth. I have to keep going over just a little bit right now. I'm just going through the whole bike and starting to take down all the welds, as you see here, working my way down. I'll go this side of the frame, cross over the other side, and then start doing the middle here on these points. But slowly but surely it's getting there. I gotta work on this one next and just keep going. I reached out to my buddy John who who works for like an auto body shop to see what the best method is with using tools that you have at home without going out and buying extra stuff because I'm not a body shop guy. So first admit that this will not be perfect because this is not what I do for a living. I'm just doing this like anyone else would out of their garage and, and trying it out. I've done it once with the last Nardo build, it came out good. It just is very time consuming, so I'm trying to see if there's a better method. Like maybe I'm two steps behind on everything like this. If I, I'm trying to avoid getting an air compressor and start doing all the air tools and everything like that, but if that's my only option, then I guess I might have to go that route in the future if I want to keep doing stuff like this. Hope you guys are liking this. Always wear your safety glasses. I actually had one of these bits. This one of the bits broke down on me and spun up and hit me right in the the side of the face so safety first I also should be wearing probably like a mask or a respirator when doing this because you're grinding you don't want to breathe in a lot of this stuff um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day on this it's been a couple hours now just grinding away I have a lot more to do before I even get to the bondo and sanding stage so I'm gonna keep working on this intermittently through the weekend get that going for the KTM guys that follow the channel I have some new do content on the way. I have some Powertronic parts coming. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, these are not gonna be just full build videos. This is gonna be the behind the scenes, the process of what it takes to get this bike to where it needs to be. So I understand if it's not super entertaining, again, 
always just give it a thumbs up help me out with that check the links below for the amazon stuff for all the parts that i'm using so if you want to do the same thing i got you covered I got you again like share and subscribe